Let's talk now about a company in South Africa. It is uh, Cipla Medpro. There's been all sorts of things going on with Cipla Medpro recently, uh, with talks of takeover and the CEO uh, being dismissed and stuff going on. It's been a very, very volatile stock. In the studio in Johannesburg, in the Power Lunch studio in Johannesburg, is Matthew Menez from Avior Research. Matthew, thanks very much for joining us this lunchtime. What is the latest now? The Indian parent wants to take 51% of the company. They want to pay $215 million, I think. But there are all sorts of different um, uh, opinions as to whether that is the right price or not. Yeah, well, as it stands, I mean, there hasn't been a you know, formal indication from Cipla India that they're actually going to raise the price. Um, you know, it's uh, a tricky one because the relationship between the two groups are so so intertwined. Um, you know, I think it's more speculative to expect that the that Cipla India comes and makes a, a better offer, say closer to nine rand, possibly nine rand fifty. I mean, I wouldn't bank on it. Um, I think if you only Cipla at the moment, it's because you like the fundamental uh, long-term story and you appreciate the value that Cipla India can can bring to the operations and, uh, of course, the valuation. Um, but uh, you know, I think 855 is is pretty fair. Uh, there are you know, a, a good number of of, of reasons for that. Uh, but as it stands, you know, it's it's more speculative than than definitive. So 855 is the opening gambit. I mean, uh, what normally happens in these cases, Matthew, is that these people dance around a little bit. You get up to 875, 880, uh, something like that, and everybody will be happening, uh, happy. But the, the 855 is the opening one. Is that fair, given Cipla's record in the uh, pharmaceutical uh, and healthcare arena in South Africa? I mean, I think it's fair. Um, the record has been certainly good, but it's been a valuation that's always been dogged by, you know, uncertainty surrounding the sustainability of of the relationship between the two firms. Um, it probably values it on, on a, about a 10 to 11 times uh, forward forward PE, um, which is pretty cheap by you know sector or healthcare sector standards and and relative to the market. But I think if you're a simpler shareholder. Uh, there are no clear catalysts apart from this deal to actually really drive the share price. There are a lot of headwinds operationally, well, specifically in terms of the RAND. Um, you know, MCC is a bit of a problem for Supplement, for Supplement Pro. Um, so, you know, I don't think that the valuation is too cheeky. It was probably at about a uh, 15 to 20% premium to the 90 day VWAP. Um, if you're a Supplement Pro shareholder, you want this deal to, to happen. Um, you know, I think if they come in and they buy uh, half the company at eight rand fifty-five, uh, your remaining forty-nine uh, percent of your shares, if you're a simple Medpro shareholder, are then worth maybe uh, you know upwards of upwards of eleven rand. So I think if for simple Medpro to go out and play hardball uh, and say, okay, we want seven, we want uh, sorry, eight seventy-five, eight uh, eight ninety, it's not really going to move the needle uh, too much for the shareholders. But what will, move the what will move the needle and will be very negative for simple shareholders is the deal falls through. Um, so I think yeah, that will right frame the, the negotiations. And also, just remember that you've had massive leadership disruptions at Simple Med Pro. Uh, you've got a board that is uh, quite shaky at the moment because of all the governance issues. Uh, you've got, you know, I appreciate there's some, some strong independent directors at the, at the company now. Um, but again, it's unclear who's going to go out there and say to Cipla India, okay, we want 950, otherwise we uh, uh, recommending shareholders walk away. And also, there's no real uh, dominant shareholder in Cipla Medpro. It's a very uh, disaggregated uh, register. Um, BE shareholders probably got about 18%, so they may champion the cause slightly. But beyond that, you've really just got to have the institutions come together. And in my understanding, there's varying views amongst the institutions as to whether it's actually worth their while uh, championing a, a, a slightly higher offer. Well, Matthew, there's two views here, and if I can just read from uh, press reports, various press reports that have come out this morning across the news ones, it says here the first one is that it would be prudent. This is a banker, of course, doesn't want to be identified. It says it would be prudent for Cipla Medpro's board to go back to Cipla Limited and get a better deal to reflect this 
reflect this contract win. So, of course, they will do that because that's what you have to do. Shareholders are not going to uh, take it lightly if uh, you just say, yeah, I'll take the first bid that's on the table. But then there's another one that says some analysts said Cipla Medpro cannot afford to get too tough over the bid price because the company relies so heavily on the Indian firm's commitment to supply the bulk of its medicines. So if they say 875, 920, 925, whatever the number is, then India can quite easily say, well, you can say what you like, but then we won't supply you with the stuff that you need. Yeah, it's, not, it, uh, it's a complex company. It's a small company, but it's complicated. And both those comments, I think, are uh, you know, not fully informed. Um, you know, Simpler India can't just walk away uh, from Simpler Med Pro. The mm. relationship's too evolved, and the intellectual property in Simpler Med Pro, or at least that Simpler Med Pro distributes in South Africa on behalf of Simpler India, is in Simpler Med Pro's name. So Simpler India walk away, and you know, there's serious questions about the sustainability of about 8% uh, of Simpler India's sales. So you know, I think Simpler India can't be too um, uh, uh, aggressive on in, in the negotiations here as well because they've got a lot to lose. I mean, Cipla and Medpro obviously need Cipla India uh, a hell of a lot. And then in terms of the ARV uh, contract and how that changes the valuation, you know, I think that's probably that's you know some backing or some grounding there. But it is also after the fact. I mean, the deal was made at well, the indicative offer was 855, and a couple of months later you had the ARV tender. So to me, it's it's fair play to Cipla mm -hmm. India. They back the 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 long-term uh, potential and the future earnings of of Medpro, and uh, you know they've they've they, they they've come right. I mean, I think the share is trading at nine bucks at the moment, not because uh, the market expects a higher offer. Um, you know, I think a higher offer would just be more show of uh, show of good faith from from Cipla India. Um, I think this chair is trading close to nine bucks on the expectation that this deal goes through. And then, as I said, mm. uh, there's a lot of upside in MedPro. It's a very messy company. I mean, when I say messy, I don't mean messy in terms of the way it's run, but is, as you quite rightly said, complicated company, very volatile company, not great for investors. Uh, why has it taken so long for Cipla India to come in and say, we want 51% of it? It's great. Money comes into South Africa, boosts our, our, our flagging foreign, um, uh, foreign uh, in inflows. But why is it well, taking so long? Why didn't they do this in the first uh, place? You know, I, I never previously thought this deal would never happen. Um, Simpler India's business model is very much uh, focused on the manufacturing, which they do out of India almost exclusively, and the Indian market. So when they go into the States or Europe or the Middle East and, and, and of course South Africa, they typically, or they have always used a distributor. Um, you know, they have been a conservative company and tended to shy away from the front end. Now you've had some changes in the management team um, and you gradually, you know, there's been murmurings out of the company or at least uh, intimated comments at results and, uh, you know, at, at in releases saying that that strategy may evolve. Um, and now we see that it is evolving. Um, so I think they're looking to Cipla Medpro as uh, a foil to test the waters of distribution, see whether you know, it works for, for them as a company, and you know, it's accretive to them. Uh, if you, well, based on the 855 target price, it's accretive to Cipla India's earnings to maybe about 4%. So it's, it's a, a good deal for them, and it just took a long time to, to take place because it was not consistent with the strategy and a strategy that's now evolving under a new management team. Matthew, very quickly, 10 seconds. Buy or sell Cipla Medpro on the JSC? Uh, I'll, I'll certainly buy it at the moment uh, with the caveat that if the deal falls away, you're probably back in six round 50. You know, I think the deal is sound. Uh, both parties need the deal to happen and I think shareholders know that so there's not going to be too much uh, argument about the price.